and welcome to another episode of Startup Hustle Middle East. Today we are so excited because we are at Charger Entrepreneurship Festival and we're speaking with Jonas. So Jonas is a digital transformation speaker, he is an author and investor and he's also the co-founder of Skype. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And welcome to Charger. Thank you. So I want to start off by just finding out a little bit about what it was like to start Skype and what was the most important lesson you learned from that journey. Well, I think, you know, when we, we started, we never thought we were going to succeed. We should remember there was ICQ, there was Instant Messenger, there were yeah. uh, Microsoft Net meetings. So it was more like, you know, how long can we actually continue to, to run faster than the big giants mm -hmm. before they come after us? Oh my uh, God, I remember ICQ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really long time ago. Yeah, it was a really, it yeah. makes me feel very young when you say that. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel very young too. <laughs> so, um, no, and I think the other advice or the more interesting perspective, we could actually start this company out of Stockholm. And we should remember at this point in time, there were no unicorns in Stockholm, mm. hadn't been done out of Stockholm before. So I think that was all the cool companies came out of Silicon Valley. So by yeah. starting this, you know, in Europe, in Stockholm was something that hadn't been done before. So was that more challenging because of a lack of resources there or no, it's actually people cool. weren't looking at Stockholm at the time? No, I think it, it, was, um, it, was, um, it was a good breathing ground. There was a lot of people like myself that have been in the telco industry okay. we had Ericsson we had people that could code there was a there was a, a lot of good circumstances which made it possible to start in, in Sweden but I think the, the ambition was we had a global ambition from day one mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we didn't stay in Sweden we moved to, to London the development went to Estonia so it was just the ambition we started a global company from day one it doesn't mm. matter where you are okay and now you lecture on entrepreneurship as well uh, in Stanford University mm. so what what is your biggest piece of advice that you give to startup founders? From your experience? Well, I think there's a lot of advice to, <clears throat> to founders. I think, you know, we, we've written the book around, you know, the nine different gears. I would say there are two things that you really need to rethink. One is, you know, you need to build a product that people love and a mm -hmm. product that is better than all the other products. Mm -hmm. The second part is that you need to innovate on costs. I, I talk about innovating in zeros. Yeah. So by really taking out costs, a lot of these most successful companies like Skype was built that we didn't have costs. You know? mm -hmm. Amazon has no inventory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kareem. Uh, yeah, Kareem doesn't have drivers. So mm -hmm. so it's it's a way to rethink cost structure. And this has been done in all business models for years and years because mm -hmm. you do something more efficient. Mm -hmm. So by by by, making by reducing it, capital. Yeah, yeah, by reducing capital costs, mm -hmm. but also making a better product by enabling technology, then you have something really, really interesting. Okay, so it's all about access over ownership. Um, so you don't own hotel rooms, you... But it is not a access. It's more about, you know, the deployment because if you don't have the ownership, you can also scale faster. So this mm. all enables exponential growth. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise Very you need to build in a warehouse. So you, your growth is so much slower. By, mm. by innovating in zeros, you know, so unlock exponential growth. So what would you say to a startup that um, isn't based on uh, technology and has high capital costs? Does it not have, this, does it have too many limitations to scale and you wouldn't be interested in investing as part of Gear Up or BC, BCG yeah, Ventures? Yeah. No, I think for me, I think it's a very interesting perspective because a lot of these companies actually have a lot of money. Mm. They have an existing working business uh, idea. So it's more about how can you transform that Okay. Like if you're a trucking company, mm -hmm. how can you enable the thinking? Let's do better product, but let's innovate in zeros. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But what we ha tend to, or management, is that they often gravitate back to the old business model. So mm -hmm. embracing the new business model is often easy, but accepting that the old business model is going to die yeah. is the hard part. Yeah. And I think often for the family members or for, for, you know, for the owners, they can often quite fastly adapt to the change it's often middle management really that has vested their life in running a truck company that feels very uncomfortable moving in so for mm, me it's more like i think there's a hidden opportunity for many of these companies that are making good money to actually deploy it and actually bring themselves to a better place in the future that's interesting because uh, if you look at this region uh, some of the big giants mm. are family run businesses that have a lot of legacy mm. and legacy in businesses that are very capital intensive mm. very retail space driven mm. so it's interesting to hear that uh, you're saying that these are the kind of people that are also looking at digital transformation and what's next because they have an understanding that it's going to be obsolete soon 
Well, I think they understand it. I think no one has really taught them, okay, what are the fundamentals? Because mm-hmm. you need to look at unit economics. You need to probably make money over time, but it's a different mythology because but the mythology only makes sense if you can take out cost. Mm-hmm. So, so it were, requires you, 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 some so risk. Oh, not risk, but it's also rethinking the business model. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if you own trucks, this is a way of actually doing things without owning trucks or having drivers. Or route it, optimization uh, yeah, 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 yeah. for... Then it becomes route optimization. It becomes mm-hmm. other assets that you need to be really good at mm, okay okay great but it's so easy to gravitate back to say okay but we work know how we know over. this yeah. so we'll uh, stick yeah, to yeah, this yeah. yeah okay great um so what do you think of uh, is this your first time in the in the no, region no i've been here quite a lot okay so what do you think of the startup ecosystem here um, well, I think it's 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 great. I think there's in, been a lot of efforts, but I think there can be done even more. You know, yeah, we agree. I mean, yeah, yeah with, within three hours, you can reach billions and billions of people, both mm. into Africa and, and to India. Mm. So I think it's a great hub, and it's you know easier for for also for Westerners to be here. So I mm. think there could be much more done. Mm. Um, so for me, it's more about also how when will you actually have your first unicorns that with your unique idea? So I not see, Kareem uh, or uh, Souk, yeah, but there but very, homegrown ideas. Yeah, but they're great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they I open up the market. They for open sure. up the market, and hopefully, these entrepreneurs will leave now with with a lot of money and actually start something else. Yeah, we actually think that that's going to happen. In another episode, uh, we were speaking to someone and talking about how we're hoping that because there were so many uh, millionaires created from the Kareem uh, huh? acquisition, um, we're hoping that they would invest back in the ecosystem and support homegrown ideas um, and talent from the region so um, we started this podcast to create education around the ecosystem and to profile thought leaders from it so we see some shift happening but it is slow and it it could be much faster yeah yeah Yeah. and it's great to have people like yourself visiting and and giving talks at charger entrepreneurship festivals when you guys started skype like what was your um, you know um uh, monetization strategy how are you guys planning to monetize it in the beginning we didn't really have a clue <laughs> okay <laughs> and i think that was the biggest challenge but that meant that you know all the swedish vcs you know mm-hmm. said no because most of the perspective was like we were super happy we could use the technology right uh, we could do a product that people loved mm-hmm. without paying for it and then we we'll said okay we have to try to figure out you know the monetization model but mm-hmm. when you talk to investors early on they say okay what's your business model we said we haven't figured that one out yet right and they're like great guys you know <laughs> come back when you have <laughs> okay so uh when did you guys experience the first uh you know growth spurt in in skype like when did you feel like okay this is taking off and people are starting to use it uh how was the initial marketing for your uh for skype done i think the the, the beginning and the, the challenge was that in the it's a network service and right. the more user you have the better the product is mm-hmm. but in the beginning you have no users so it's quite useless you know yeah you i know call <laughs> someone and say hey could you download this piece of software so i can call you for free and they're like you're a cheap bastard why can't we call, <laughs> call like this so it was right. you know very difficult to grow in the beginning Okay. Uh, I think one of the main main things that unlocked it is that we made this kind of recommendation service mm-hmm. that if after good call, if you click the button, mm-hmm. uh, we actually opened your Outlook and we sent a mail to all of your contacts saying, hi, I've started using Skype. This, is my, your u- yeah, oh, this okay. is my username and this is uh, and I would like to call you for free. Okay. So this was like, and since it was a downloadable client, we could actually do this. Right. Uh, That's a very good idea. So you uh, growth hacked your way into it. Yeah, we growth hacked it. I don't think you can do that today, but you know, at that point in time, we could do it. And since the product was great, people like, oh shit, I clicked this, and whoa, I I sent mails to all my contacts. You were like, ooh. But since (laughs) the product, everyone wrote back and said, hey, this is great, thank you, blah 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 blah, and because people loved it, it actually worked. Right. So did you guys have a a big overhead for creating all this VoIP infrastructure for Skype? Uh, Like, was it cost intensive at the beginning? Like, how were you funding it? No, we were funding it because, again, innovating in zeros, Mm -hmm. um, normally you had to go around the world and rack a lot of servers. Right. Um, But we came to the conclusion there was a lot of CPU power in the world not Mm -hmm. being used. So we said sharing is caring. Okay. So if you're if you were not using Skype, you left and you had a good bandwidth and your CPU was not being used, we actually transmitted a lot of calls through your computer. 
Oh, you, really? You, so you guys use peer-to-peer technology? Yeah, so you, your computer could, could become a super node. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know Skype did that. No, we didn't tell, talk about it too much. <laughs> Very few people knew the, about, you know, you could become a super node. But that was a way for actually us to, to actually grow and create also good quality because if you're two computers close to each other, you know, you talk to right. directly to each other. Oh, that's awesome. So you guys uh, innovated on the technology side of things. Is that what was interesting to Microsoft? Or what, what do you think Microsoft was uh, interested in Skype for? I don't know. I, I, you know Because uh, they had their own platforms before yeah, that, but right? I think I, I left the company like two years after the acquisition to, to eBay. Okay. So I was fired and we left and haven't looked back. So. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll link up to your profile yeah. uh, and link up your book. And uh, yeah, it, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much.